for the trust because we realize that the Kenyans know that we lost a lot of money through fraudulent claims by hospitals in this country. And as the committee responsible for all in this country, we undertook it as our duty because our main work is to safeguard Kenyans, is to do oversight of the other sector, to make sure that our people get quality for money and our people get the quality services. So as a committee, we have undertaken this activity for the last three months now. And even most of the reports that you have seen around in media, most of them originated from this committee, from our preliminaries and our investigations. One of the main issues that we have realized as a committee throughout our trip and throughout our audit is that the body responsible for registering and classifying hospitals in this country, which is KMPDC, failed Kenyans. Because some of the hospitals we have found registered as level four, as level five, and you look at the facilities they have, the services they are offering, then you realize KMPDC failed this country terribly. I even say that the KMPDC needs to offer a public apology for the confusion they have caused in the health sector of this country. Secondly, we have realized that it was a great conflict of interest for KMPDC to be given the mandate to license health facilities because most health facilities are owned by medical doctors. Medical doctors are members of KMPDC, fully paid up members. So KMPDC goes to check facilities for their for their members. Mm -hmm. So we find that we, we will commend as a committee that the registration of services and the registration of professional professionals be left with the KMPDC, then registration and inspection of facilities be given to a different body so that we can uh, avoid this conflict of interest. We realized if you take your patient today to a government hospital, what we call public hospitals, and they require maybe an operation that is supposed to be paid by NHIF, by the time you get an authorization for that patient to be operated on in this country from a public hospital, it's a long process. But for all the hospitals we have gone now, the private hospitals, we find that they were, the process of getting authorization from NHIF seemed very easy. So it seems there was a collusion between NHIF and the specific hospitals. So that's all I'm saying. As we deal with the hospital, because the hospital did not go to any time and break, their, <laughs> break into their accounts, we will have a serious issue to, to sort out with any time. And KMPDC. They have failed this country greatly because they have not even looked at the requirements. Like we are standing outside a level four hospital. And if you look at the requirements of a level four hospitals, the hospital does not meet the requirements. So the licensing body never checked on that. And like the chairman said, if the money we pay to NHIF was used uh, efficiently, it is enough to pay for every Kenya uh, hospitalization or outpatient in this country. So this code 15 was actually established to siphon money from NHIF. Because we're going every hospital that every facility that has a COVID 15, we are seeing abnormal surgeries. Like you can go to a hospital that has done in a day specialized surgeries like 29. And we all know that a day has 24 hours. We don't expect that in 24 hours you've done 29 surgeries and they are all specialized and you don't have some services, you've got to outsource some. So I think it was just a way of getting money out of NHIF. How was this pre-authorized if getting one pre auth from NHIF takes that long? Sometimes we even have members, our voters or our our citizens, calling us to help them with the pre-authorization with NHIF. But when you go to these ones with code 15, they, are, they have pre-authorization to as many as 29 in a day. And you wonder what happened. How, what is with this COD-15? What is with these facilities region? Uh, the KMPTU issue is coming out clearly. It is an issue of conflict of interest. I just asked myself, is this why Ministry of Education licenses uh, or, or actually registers education facilities? And then TSC actually employs teachers uh, to, uh, to work in those facilities. And I think this is what should happen to KMPDCU so that we are able to separate registration and membership of uh, the doctors who most of the time are actually the owners of these particular facilities. And uh, I think that is one of the way forwards. Of course, this is um, a direct reporting 
from the meeting that we've had here. There's nothing final. This is just a, a tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more that we have been able to find out. And as a committee, we are going to be able to sit down. We are going to be able to put down the facts. We will be able to give um, recommendations as well. But one of the strongest recommendations as it is coming out in our tours is that KMPDCU is the elephant in the room and it must be dealt with.